Hello, or my haba from the kitchen. Tonight I'm going to attempt to make some Turkish Delight flavoured cider. So here are my key ingredients for tonight's cider. So this is going to be a really quick and simple cider, no messing about tonight. So this is apple juice from Concentrate, the Turbo Cider Method. Check out the Facebook group Turbo Ciders for All, lots of good recipes in there. This is rose syrup from Simply Syrups. Now, controversially, it contains preservatives. It does it say it somewhere, it's just there. Um, it's got E2O2 in it, and there is a school of thought that says that's not going to work, it's, the yeast isn't going to like it. I'm going to risk it. I'm going to see what happens. Some people boil this to get rid of the uh, preservatives. I'm just going to go with it and see what happens. I'm going to put a bit of pectolase in, which will aid clearing. Browing yeast nutrient, and my yeast of choice tonight is Cross My Loof Cider Yeast. So turbo ciders are called turbo ciders because they're quick to make. Apple juice and concentrate, a lot less messing about than actual apples. So this goes straight in there. So I'm going to hopefully add four litres of apple juice and half a litre of the rose syrup, which will give it the Turkish Delight flavour. In this recipe tonight, I'm not putting any tannins in, any tea. I'm going to leave it just with those two ingredients. The focus of this recipe tonight is quickness and simplicity. So I'll just get my second litre of apple juice on the go. Try not to get it all over the kitchen. The wife will kill me. Anyway, are you following my Facebook page for Moss Home and Garden? And have you subscribed to my YouTube channel? If you have, thank you very much. And if you haven't, then please subscribe to my Facebook and... You can find me on YouTube by just searching for Moss Home and Garden, basically. And here goes the rose syrup. It's so gloopy. Gelatinous. It smells beautiful. It really does smell like Turkish Delight. Surprisingly. Oh, it's that good. I'm going to rinse the jug out because it was quite gloopy and gelatinous and I don't want to lose any around the edge of the jug. So I'm going to rinse the jug with some apple juice. If you've got any really interesting and novel cider recipes of your own, please feel free to message me with them. I'm always game to try new stuff. So, I mean, this has taken so far seconds, minute, whatever, not very long. And last but not least, the final litre of apple juice. There's always one that won't open. Norman Bates taught me well. Right. Let's get back on it. Like a carb on it. So who's looking at that demijohn and going, oh, he's overfilled it. I don't care. So one of the reasons I don't mind overfilling the damage on is because I've got to take the gravity and I've just wasted a few mils there. Never mind. So that's gone into the hydrometer jar and what's in here doesn't go back in. I'm going to have a little sample of that. So let's take the original gravity and this will allow me to work out the alcohol by volume at the end of the brew. So this is just apple juice and half a litre of the uh, Simply Rose syrup. and to say that there's no extra sugar in there, this is not bad. There must be a really high sugar content in that because the original gravity of this is 1.064, Quick nifter. Beautiful, but more subtle flavor than I thought actually. So when it comes to bottling, I may back flavor with a little bit more syrup which will mean I need to put a bit less sugar in. Okay, so now I'm gonna add some of my dry powders. So first of all, we'll have a teaspoonful of pectolase, which will hopefully help this to achieve more clarity and it will clear easier. So there's a teaspoonful of yeast nutrient gone in there from browing. And finally, my cross my loof cider yeast. So if the yeast doesn't like the fact that there's preservative, in the sugar syrup it'll just take a little bit longer to sort of build up a bit of a culture and get going and activate but do you know what i'm not bothered i did a vimto cider just the same way 
and it was lovely, really, really nice. So I don't mind if it takes a bit longer to go. Sometimes the best things come to those who wait. So I'm just giving this a little shake around now to get it all to mix together. I think that when the yeast meets the sugars and the uh, nutrient, it's gonna have a jolly time in there. I'm hoping that fermentation won't take too long, but if it does, I'd, I don't care, it doesn't matter. Right, lovely job. So you can see that it is still quite full, but I'm not expecting this to build a big Krausen. If it does, I'll fit a, a blow off pipe, but I think a standard airlock will be just fine on this one. Okay, so that's this one labelled up for now. I'll come back to you with an update when fermentation begins. Okay, it's two hours later and fermentation is happening very slowly, which is fine. I kind of expected that. But there's definitely something going on there with the yeast on top. Early stages of a Krausen and the airlock is moving. There is positive pressure inside. And here it is the next day. You can see the yeast clearly hanging around there. But on top we've definitely got a Krausen. Fermentation is happening, as you've just seen, the airlock just went. It's going slowly, but this is going to be a case of slow and steady wins the race. So unless anything dramatic happens, the next film that you see from me will be when fermentation is over. I'll catch you then. Good afternoon from the kitchen folks. It's my Turkish Delight Cider bottling day. Yep, bottling day, not clearing day. Because if you have a look at it, you can see it's done that all by itself. And doesn't it look lovely? Now I'm getting about one bubble through the airlock every minute to say 70 seconds, something like that. Not an awful lot. There is a little bit of activity still. You can see some rising bubbles, but honestly, this is really the tail end of fermentation. So it's been in the demijohn now for 21 days. So I think it's time now for it to go from there into the bottles. So looking at the amount that's in the demijohn, I'm going to guess I'm going to get five 750s and maybe a 500 as well. There's not six 750s there. Now, I normally put sugar in for priming, which means uh, the yeast which is in suspension in here will eat the sugar that I put in the bottles. It will create CO2, tiny more, a bit of alcohol, but not much. Uh, the CO2 that it creates so it will create pressure. That's what gives this a fizz. I'm not going to use sugar today. I'm going to have a go with a bit more of the rose syrup and I've got no idea whatsoever how much to put in. I'm playing this by ear, so I'm just going to put a little dribble in like that in each bottle and hope that the sugar that's contained within that will be enough for carbonation. I don't want to put too much in because I might end up with bottle bombs and I don't want that. But it's bung out, siphoning tube in and I'm holding the tube in place with this very useful clip which unfortunately has disturbed the sediment so I'm just going to have to now just wait for a minute. Let's do it. So the first bit that's come out is a bit milky with the sediment from the bottom, but that's fine. It's gone into the hydrometer tube. And I'm picking a bit of sediment up, but it's not an awful lot and it will settle in the bottom of the bottle. And in fact, it will help carbonation actually. It just smells like dry apple cider. I'm not sure what the taste will be like at this point in time.
And there we go, bubbles in the siphoning tube. Tells me that that is now over. And if I empty what's in the tube into that brown bottle, I will indeed fill it up. So let's take the final gravity of this brew. It's slightly higher than anticipated, actually. That is on 1.010, which is telling me that maybe I've been a bit premature. But it had been in there for three weeks and fermentation slowed right down. We'll just have to see what happens, won't we? So I need to work out the alcohol by volume. So I take the original gravity of 1.064. I deduct from that the final gravity of 1.010. That equals 0.054. Then I multiply this by 131.25 and that equals a final alcohol by volume of 7%. Just nice for a cider. So most of my bottles need bungs. I have got one that needs a crown cap but I'll do this afterwards. My bungs are plastic bungs and I've had them softening in hot water to make them a bit more malleable. I'll pour these out now. It just helps to get them in sometimes. So then I just need to shake each bung quite vigorously to get the water out of it, get it in the bottle and push and in it goes. That's one. Sometimes this works a charm, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, I tend to find the posher bottles are the more difficult ones to do and the cheaper ones are not. However, that's not always the case because these are Aldi ones and sometimes these can be a pain, although that's gone in anyway. Nothing wrong with Aldi, by the way. <sighs> you notice there is a slight pink tinge to the bottle, which I quite like. That's kind of reminiscent of the Turkish Delight. So I'm just getting the crown capper on this one. It's a Kegland crown capper. There, we can consider that capped. So I now need to get my bunged bottles caged. And the cage is an essential safety feature which will hold the bung in place because there will be a little bit more fermentation takes place in the bottle which is going to give it the sparkle. And the production of CO2 creates pressure and this stops the bung from flying off. I've got a few more to do, it's not that exciting, back in a minute. So that's bottles capped, bunged and caged. Now I'm going to give them a quick rinse to get the sticky off them. Because I want to label them next. Well, there they are. Time to prepare the labels. Okay, I've got my labels set up on a simple Microsoft Word template just a case of printing these out. Right, now time to label up. So I just make them look a bit nice and professional. They're not the most exciting of labels, but it doesn't matter. At least I know what I'm drinking. I take a little bit of pride in it anyway. And here they are. Hey folks, welcome to the conditioning room. This is where my Turkish Delight cider will go for the next month. So down here are my conditioning shelves. And this here is a thermometer connected to a plug. And when the temperature goes below 19.5, plug turns on and it turns the heater on behind the shelves. And when it gets to 20.5, it turns back off again. And we're now in meteorological winter. 1st of December so this is on quite a lot but it keeps them at a good temperature for the carbonation to take place. So this is where my cider will remain for the next month and the next update will be opening and tasting in a month's time. Catch you then folks. Good evening from the kitchen folks it's my Turkish Delight Cider opening night and as usual I'm very excited about this one. So this has been in the bottle for 25 days 
I'm hoping that it should have achieved conditioning and sparkle. Let's see. If I look at the bung, it's raised by about a millimetre, two millimetres on one side. So fingers crossed, it's going to have some life in it. So I want it to have a sparkle, look good in the glass, smell nice, taste nice. What am I going to get? Let's find out. So I'm really hoping that this is going to be a nice flavour because I really do like Turkish Delight. And it was obviously good to discover the uh, brand of syrups that I did. Let's see if I get a pop. Hmm, a muted pop, but there is vapour. So it wasn't a big exciting pop, but it was a pop. Let's have a look. Hmm. Oh, it is, it's a sparkler. It is a sparkler. It's just not a rapid sparkler, but it is a sparkler. Okay, let's have a rose. That overarching smell of Turkish Delight is definitely 100% there. Wow. That's got Turkish Delight written all over it. It's absolutely obvious. The flavour's amazing. Flipping heck, I did not expect it to be that Turkish Delight flavoured. So this is absolutely gorgeous. It's an absolute winner. The rose syrup is brilliant. The flavour that it's given it is absolutely wonderful. I definitely would have preferred it to be more sparkling, but I'm still going to enjoy this and I will absolutely use that rose syrup again. Cheers, folks. It's been a pleasure, as always, and I'll catch you on the next broom. The film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the Home and Garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv. Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.